Apollo 11 launched on July 16, 1969 at 1.32 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center aboard a Saturn V rocket. The mission's goal was to land the first people to set foot on the moon and then bring them safely back to the Earth, a goal which it achieved. The two crew members who would actually set foot on the lunar surface using the lunar module were Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin, while the third crew member, the Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, stayed in lunar orbit with the Command and Service Module, which would bring them back home. For all three crew members, this was their second and final space flight. Armstrong had been on Gemini 8, Collins on Gemini 10, and Aldrin on Gemini 12. This mission was preceded by two crewed lunar missions, Apollo 8, which put people into lunar orbit for the first time, and Apollo 10, which was the first test of the lunar module around the moon, though it did not perform a landing. Successes in those two tests, along with Apollo 7 and Apollo 9 in Earth orbit, allowed Apollo 11 to meet President John F. Kennedy's stated goal for the Apollo program of landing humans on the moon and returning them safely back to the Earth by the end of the decade. Before the string of successes though, the program had started with a tragedy, the crew of Apollo 1, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee dying due to a fire in the command module during a test on the surface. That had delayed the program for more than a year and a half as the command module underwent a redesign to prevent it from happening again. Still, the Apollo Saturn V system was far from flawless as two separate failures on Apollo 13, a vibration issue on the second stage and a service module explosion that ultimately prevented a landing on the moon but thankfully not the safe return of the crew, clearly showed. Apollo 11 did not experience any problems during launch and its transfer to the moon using the rocket's third stage was conducted without any issues as well. After the five minute burn that put them on their way, the command and service module separated, docked with the lunar module, and pulled it away from the Saturn V third stage, which would pass by the moon and, getting a gravity assist from it, end up in solar orbit. The journey from low Earth orbit to lunar orbit took a little over three days. That trip was fastest closer to the Earth, and so was able to pass through the radiation belts quickly, but slowed down gradually due to Earth's continued gravitational effect, so that it did not approach the moon too fast and did not have to do too much work to slow down. The crew used the service module engine to make orbit around the moon on July 19th. Armstrong and Aldrin transferred into the lunar module, nicknamed Eagle, on July 20th, and eventually separated from the command and service module, named Columbia, after checking everything out. Their landing would aim for Mare Tranquillitatis, the Sea of Tranquility, and the timing of the mission ensured that the sun would be at an angle so that shadows would be cast, making rocks and craters more visible. Once on the surface, Armstrong and Aldrin would have constant communication with Earth, which would be directly overhead of the landing site. Collins, staying in Columbia, would have communications only half the time, since for half of each orbit he was on the opposite side of the moon from the Earth. Eagle landed on the lunar surface on July 20th at 8.17pm UTC. During the descent, however, Armstrong and Aldrin got some unpleasant surprises. First, about five minutes into the descent, the guidance computer had a series of program alarms, 12.02 and 12.01. Computer engineer Jack Garman back in Mission Control indicated that it was safe to continue on these alarms, as Margaret Hamilton, the director of Apollo Flight Computer Programming at MIT, later explained, the alarms were just to indicate that the computer couldn't complete all tasks in real time and needed to prioritize some over others, but it was programmed to know which were more critical. Another issue for Armstrong and Aldrin was that their landing location was a bit off and the computer seemed to be aiming for a rocky area. Armstrong took manual control, though still moderated by the computer, to stay away from the spot and set the lunar module down in a safer location. A minor flaw was that a low fuel indicator activated early due to sloshing and later missions had baffles in the tanks to prevent this. They went through the post-landing checklist as mission control held its breath, then announced Houston, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. As Armstrong took the first step on the lunar surface, he famously said, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Apollo 11's moonwalk and sample collection time was the shortest of the six missions to land, about two and a half hours, to keep things as safe as possible for this first attempt. Eagle, now just an ascent stage, having left the spent descent stage on the surface, returned to Columbia after nearly 22 hours on the surface. The two crew members rejoined Mike Collins and ditched the ascent stage prior to the burn to return to Earth. Apollo 11 splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th at 4.50 p.m. UTC. The mission was followed by six other missions to the moon, of which five were successful at landing, and all had a successful return of the crew. What else humans will accomplish on the moon remains to be seen.
Thank you for watching this mission profile of Apollo 11.